Okay, in this segment, and we're back to page one again, um, I want to go back to the vocabulary. Now, so far we talked about the um, graphite and the HB graphite scale. We talked about paper tooth and a little bit about rag paper. I want to talk a little bit more about the paper. Um, rag paper, of course, as I said, is um, I said something about handmade, mold made. Um, if you can think of the, um, first of all, you can distinguish that by the edge of the paper. That's called a decal. Um, this particular paper is made using uh, rag pulp. What they, use, what they will do normally, and especially in handmade paper, which is the easiest way to describe this, is that they have a, a paper pulp that is floating in a tub of water. Um, you would use a framed screen, about like a, what you'd see on a, a house window, and you would immerse it under the pulp in the water, and then lift it straight up, and the pulp would set on the screen, and as the water drained through, all the paper pulp would then settle. Um, that way you have a texture on the bottom that's made from the screen. The edge of the pulp forms a rough edge, and the rough edge is called a decal. The paper that you're using in your class, I'm going to bring this pad down into view here, is this uh, drawing paper pad, which is 18 by 24 inches. Now this pad may say drawing or it may say sketch. Now the difference between those two things is the thickness of the paper, and which also would be the amount of tooth on the paper. So the drawing pad is a little better paper. It is not a lot better. Both of these papers are acid-free, which it says right here. Acid-free means that it does, isn't made from paper byproducts with a high acidic content. They're made with uh, probably um, neutral acidic or neutral pH um, pulp, which still could be paper byproducts, but not necessarily rag content or especially cotton rag content. So acid-free does not mean the same thing as this 100% rag paper. That's why this paper is about 25, 30 cents per sheet. This stuff is probably about 10 times that. Now, the, the drawing paper, how you can tell the difference between drawing and sketch is you look at this number right here and it says 70 pound. Now paper comes in a size, usually a standard size at the mill. Uh, that could be 20, 28, it could be 40, 56 inches. Um, but they have some standard, um, what they call signature sheets. Now they stack those into 500 sheet stacks, which is called a ream, and that is the weight. And so if you see this and it says it's a 70 pound paper, it is the standard size, not 18 by 24, but whatever this sheet is milled in, which is probably at least four or six times this size, and then 500 sheets stacked up would weigh 70 pounds. So the drawing paper here is a 70 pound ream sheet. The sketch paper is probably a 62 to 65 pound ream sheet. So it's slightly thinner. And sometimes the, the, these come in a brown cover. You can get them in a green cover. But what you're looking for when, as a student when you're buying this stuff, you want to look at the weight of it and make sure that at least it's acid free, okay? Move this down here. Okay, the next thing we want, I'm gonna probably be using this to draw on it. So what I'm gonna do right now is flip it over so I have a little clean white area. Um, the next thing we wanna talk about on the list is the erasers. Now if you go down the list here, we have four erasers that um, are in this vocabulary. First one is the gum eraser. Uh, the next one, if we skip down, is the kneaded eraser. Then you have the pink pearl eraser, and you have the vinyl eraser. So we'll talk about these really quick one at a time. I'll move this over here. Put out the this one. Let's see. Um, 
Now they all have their own characteristics and I'm just gonna give you like three characteristics basically of each one. This is a used gum, heart gum eraser here. Uh, first of all, these are very soft. They tend to get dirty. Um, they crumble when you use them. And these are the crumbs right there. And when they have crumbs, then they change your shape and it gets smaller. Um, since this is um, very soft, it's, it's, all, it's very good for uh, racing large areas, okay? Uh, the next one on the list is a kneaded eraser. Now I've got a couple examples of that one. Here's uh, one. Uh, that, see, when you get these, you have to cut this with an X-Acto knife to get it out of here, and then it's gonna have another plastic wrapping around that. Um, usually you'll end up forming it into something. This is one that hasn't been used very much. Actually, it's about the same color as this one. Here's one that's been used a lot, and this is probably six of these. Um, the nice thing about the kneaded eraser is you can form it to any shape. So if I want to make a, a small little point like that, these are very soft, and they, what they do is they don't crumble at all. They absorb the media. That's why they start to get dirty. Um, these are suitable for um, charcoal and for um, uh, small areas. And the reason for small areas is because you can make it into a small point. Now I'll get back to this when we talk about uh, charcoal a little bit. A uh, third one is a pink pearl eraser. Um, pink pearl um, has a couple, of what's, here's a couple used ones and what's going to happen to them. Uh, they start to get rounded off and then they get really rounded off and can get dirty. Um, the pink pearl eraser is actually a um, rubber eraser that has pumice in it. It also has some vegetable oils. Um, but this one, uh, what they call, it, it actually, it doesn't crumble, it actually just shreds is what they call that. And um, you're actually peeling pieces of it off. Uh, it's very similar to the eraser on this, although these are a little harder, but not, this one doesn't seem to be, but most of them are. Um, so the characteristics of this is that it shreds and loses its shape. Um, it's harder than the gum eraser. It's harder than this one. Um, so it doesn't lose its shape as quickly. So this is more suitable for racing small to medium areas because since it's a little more a little stiffer um, you can actually sculpt it as you're working with it see to get it to get points into it okay the last one is the vinyl uh, the vinyl eraser come in a package like this and they don't change too much as you use them it has a sliding cardboard cover here and so you can keep your hands clean. It, it rarely ever wears down, and it wears down very slowly. It does change its shape, but, but not much. It changes its shape uh, very little. Um, it's hard uh, or very, fairly stiff. It stays fairly clean. Um, this is good for small to medium areas. Um, this was marketed probably in the mid 20th century uh, as Mylar. Um, but we call it a vinyl eraser. Okay, so let's go back to the um, vocabulary. Um, so now we're going to talk about charcoal. And, and charcoal is, is basically a, a form of, um, uh, it, it's uh, carbon. And um, it's, it's material that is, is control fired. Um, without oxygen, so it's an oxygen-deprived environment. Um, that way it doesn't completely disintegrate and burn up, because with, with a lot of oxygen, everything will burn and, and it will decompose rapidly. So if you control the oxygen environment when burning things like wood, um, you can actually preserve the wood and it turns to charcoal. Now, uh, charcoal comes in, a, in two forms as far as artists are concerned. We have the compressed, and we have the willow vine charcoal. The willow vine looks like this. Um, it comes in different sizes in round form because I, these are actually uh, willow vine twigs in that control burn. So most of these are all the same density. 
um, which means hardness. This is about a, a quarter inch diameter. Here's a small piece that's eighth inch diameter. Um, they'll make marks like this. It's a very beautiful thing to work with. It's more of a layout type of um, material because it doesn't really stay on the paper very well. You see how, how easy it is for me to blend it? And this also shows off the tooth of this um, rag paper very well. The other kind that you have is called the um, compressed charcoal. And it comes in a package and looks like this. Compressed charcoal is made from pulverized um, charcoal that's been fired. Then they have to add a binder to it, generally a water-based binder like a gum, Arabic, could be other synthetic binders. They have a synthetic gum as well. And they compress those together into shapes from the powder and the binder. And then they fire them again. And as they fire them, different fire temperatures and time will give them a different hardness. Where these are the same hardness, which is basically soft, these come in designations that are a lot like your uh, graphite pencils. And this one in this orange box says, 2B, 4B, and 6B. That means you have four pencils. You probably have one of each, and then they gave you two of one of them. These are marked. They're stamped right into the mold, and you'll have to look closely. We can't see in this one unless I take it apart and look at it closely. But it'll say a 2B, 4B, or 6B right on the end of it. The other type of charcoal, which is a little um, uh, better for bigger areas, because uh, they're bigger pieces. It looks like a box like this. Might be blue. Uh, it's hard to say. When you take this out of the box, it'll look like this. It'll have a clear plastic tray. And then you have all these pieces in there. These are larger. And generally, I tell students to break these like this. Um, these only come in one density, which is soft. Um, the quality control on these is not as good as these but you do have more media or more bang per buck here with these. Because they're, this is, well, I shouldn't say how much it is, and it's hard to say what. But anyway, you can use these, as I did over here with this. Drawing, we'll talk about this later in the semester, how to use these. But here's one example, drawing like that. It's almost like drawing with a pencil, but these are better used in this manner. Also by adjusting pressure, you can actually um, show a hard edge and a soft edge. Um, the difference is, as you'll notice what happened here, this does not do that. Because with that binder in here, it tends to not be as um, easy to rub off. And you can blend them a little bit with your fingers, but it gets pretty messy pretty quickly. Um, now, if you were using this is where this comes in. Now, the thing about um, using the erasers like this one or this one, which is the art gum, the pink pearl, or the Statler Mars with the charcoal, yes, it will erase, OK? See, this one doesn't work as good, and this one doesn't work as good. So the plastic one tends to work the best, but uh, charcoal is really going to get after this kind of an eraser. Plus, this does leave some shredding. And so getting rid of the shreds on here without disrupting your charcoal can be difficult. That's why using the um, uh, kneaded eraser does do a better job on um, charcoal. You can also do a, a, on charcoal with this type of eraser, it's kind of a stab and twist approach. But you notice that, that when I'm erasing this stuff with this kneaded eraser, there's no residue, and I can stop at any time without having to brush all these crumbs off. So just to recap really quick, this one doesn't work at all with charcoal. This one doesn't either. This one will work with charcoal. This is really good for charcoal, okay? So, oh, the only other thing we have here to talk about is the white pastel, and then we're done with our vocabulary uh, in this section. Um, 
This is the one that I prefer to have people get. This is a Rembrandt pastel. Um, pastel is basically a higher quality pigment than uh, what's called a chalk or a colored chalk. Um, and the, but the binders are similar, which is a gum arabic binder again. Um, that means these do become somewhat water soluble and there are different kinds of things on the market. You can get watercolor pencils, you can get uh, grease pencils, you can get all kinds of different things to draw with. But we, we're not using color in here, so what we're working with with the, um, uh, we want a highly pigmented, high quality white. And so the white Rembrandt pastel is about the best. And you notice that um, it does a pretty good job of covering really black areas. Um, this is a, another form of uh, white pastel. Um, and it's probably manufactured similar to um, these um, compressed charcoals. Um, the difference in these two is probably that um, these aren't as soft and being smaller they don't distribute as much pigment given a certain area. Plus I don't think they're as highly pigmented. And being dark, you know, and as you can see when I draw with this one, um, this one's a lot harder, so what's happening is I'm pushing the charcoal out of the way more than adding something on top. Uh, so that's why I, I prefer this one. Okay, well, I think we've covered everything on the supply list in here. And I'm just going to recap a couple things here. That the, the supply list, I mean the, the vocabulary, I mean, is always going to be on this side. It'll be right under this icon. And it'll be addressed in every lesson, um, talking about things that you'll need to be able to talk about your exercises for the class and all of the words that are used in describing all of the things you're going to learn in that lesson. And so in this one, we didn't have much except for all the vocabulary. So that's the end of this one. And I'll, uh, I have two more in this lesson, and then we'll get into lesson two.